In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Source of all mercies, and God of all consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may attend to your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Let us make confession to God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given the Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those whose sins have been forgiven whose evil deeds have been forgotten. Rejoice in the Lord and be at peace. Thanks be to God. lesson is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not consider the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
second lesson from Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I already obtained this or have reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was, was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? and the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hearers of God's word, grace to you and peace from God, our creator, from Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, as always active and living among us. Amen. When I was serving in campus ministry at Iowa State, I had a couple of students who said that there were three constants to all of my sermons, and one of them was a Bonhoeffer reference. And so I thought I'd get that out of the way early today. One time in his book, Discipleship, Bonhoeffer wrote, when Christ calls a person, he bids them come and die. So we gather this Holy Week to remember our Lord's death and resurrection, and we don't have one without the other. And the reading from John that occurs in the course of this service occurs also in the midst of life and death, or actually in the Gospel of John, death and then life. In John chapter 11, we have the story of the death of Lazarus, and is raising by Jesus. And that resurrection for the Gospel of John is the final straw for Jesus' opponents. This is where the open plots against Jesus begin, is after the raising of Lazarus. And then in John 12, a week before the Passover, this is where Jesus will suffer his own death in order that the world may know eternal life in his name. This is where Mary's anointing of Jesus falls in the course of the story. And it's possible that this anointing is meant as a prefigurement of what, what Jesus knows for sure and Mary most likely suspects is coming. An anointing of a beloved body which will soon be resting in the grave. Likely fragrant with spices 
but also drawing toward that stench that Mary would remember all too well from her beloved brother's tomb. Everything about the raising of Lazarus and these last chapters of the Gospel of John pointed to these dire consequences for Jesus. Even Thomas, who we know quite often as Doubting Thomas, in the story of Lazarus says, let us go also that we might die with him. When Christ calls a person, he bids them come and die. I want you to take a minute and think back to Ash Wednesday. Think back to the invitation that I know many of you uh, offered to your congregations and to yourselves. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever may draw us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. It's a lovely invitation. What did we do after that? Do you remember? We were marked with ashes, the imposition of ashes, which signify, of course, mortality, death. Our inability to physically live forever, yes, but also our inability to follow the way of Jesus without sin and failure. We are called, like Paul, in the reading from Philippians, to a new understanding of who we are in Jesus Christ. Not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. We mark ourselves with ashes because we know loss. We know failure. We know all that has come before. We know it, as Paul says, as rubbish, as scubala. Stronger words can be used in English to, you, to translate that word. But especially we know it in the end as death. The end. When Christ calls a person, he bids them come and die. This is the full quote from that book, Discipleship. The cross is laid on every Christian. The first Christ's suffering, which everyone must experience, is the call to abandon the attachments of this world. It is that dying of the old sinner which is the result of our encounters with Christ. As we embark upon discipleship, we surrender ourselves to Christ in union with his death. We give over our lives to death. Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a person, he bids them come and die. This anointing by Mary in the Gospel of John reminds us yet again that this, this hour for Jesus has been the destination all along. And not only for Jesus, but also for us, his followers. John chapter 1, Jesus came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. He was and is the light of life, but we come to know him that way because he was shining deep within the darkness of death. And in baptism, we are baptized into that death so that the life and light of Jesus might shine through us also. Those of you who take advantage of this service today will have the opportunity to be anointed again, to be prepared for a renewal of your vows to ministry, to be anointed yet again into the death of Jesus. He bids you yet again, come and die. Come and die to the illusion of your own righteousness, Come and die to the seductive desire for power and control. Come and die to the demands of the bottom line. Come and die to valuing human life through cost-benefit analysis. Come and die with Jesus so that in Jesus, life will find you 
and raise you up. You are also called to come and live in Jesus. To pour God's extravagant love into the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. To bring nourishment to the dry and thirsty wilderness of this world. Come and live in Jesus, confident in God's promise not to condemn the world, but to save it. Come and live in Jesus, you dust who have been formed by God into new and beautiful things. Be anointed into death. Be raised into new life. Jesus bids you, come and follow him. Amen. siblings in Christ. The ministry we share is none other than the sacrificial ministry of Christ, who gave himself up to death on the cross for the salvation of the world. By his glorious resurrection, he has opened for us the way of everlasting life, and by the gift of the Holy Spirit, he shares with us the riches of his grace. To those of you who are pastors, as pastors, we are called to proclaim Jesus' death and resurrection to administer the sacraments of the new covenant, which he sealed with his blood on the cross, and to care for his people in the power of the Spirit. Do you, here in the presence of Christ and his church, renew your commitment to the ministry of Christ's saving gospel as a servant of Christ's church? I do, by the help of God. 
Do you reaffirm your promise to preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures, the three ecumenical creeds, and the Lutheran confessions? I do, by the help of God. To those of you who are deacons, as deacons, you are called to be those who stand at the doorway between the church and the world, tying each to the other and modeling Christian service in word and deed. Do you, here in the presence of Christ and his church, renew your commitment to the ministry of diaconia after the servant model of Jesus Christ? I do, by the help of God. Do you reaffirm your promise to preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures, the three ecumenical creeds, and the Lutheran confessions? I do, by the help of God. And to parish ministry associates. As parish ministry associates, you have stepped forth from among the laity to receive preparation to further the ministry of the gospel through a variety of roles in congregational settings and elsewhere. Do you, here, in the presence of Christ and his church, renew your commitment to furthering the ministry of the gospel in the roles and places for which you have been authorized? I do, by the help of God. And do you reaffirm your promise to preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures, the three ecumenical creeds, and the Lutheran confessions? I do, by the help of God. Having now renewed our commitments to ministry, we ask the same of our bishop. Do you, here in the presence of Christ and his church, reaffirm the promises made at your ordination and your installation, and your commitment to serve in the ministry of oversight to which God and the church have called you? I do, by the help of God. May the Lord, who has given us the will to do these things, give us the grace and compassion to perform them. Amen.